Time to get our HD Nation on with a speed round of questions. Daniel writes in, I recently bought a Planar brand monitor. When I rented an HD movie on iTunes, I got this lovely message. This movie cannot be played because a display that is not authorized to play protected movies is connected. Try displaying any displays that are not HDCP authorized, or authorized, as many people who can actually read would say it. Do you know what this HDCP business is, and is there any way to remedy this? Thanks, Daniel. Ah, HDCP, good old high bandwidth <laughs> digital content protection, as uh, invented by the good folks over at Intel. Uh, I'm very intimate with HDMI. Definitely. And most of the, like, not, basically pretty much anything that spits content into a home theater is going to have HTCP. It's running over a digital connection. That's yes. the way it works. It's basically a protected pathway from that source device, be it, in this case, probably your computer, to the uh, display itself. And it's usually, like Pat mentioned, using an HDMI cable as the connection, or DVI also supports it too. But uh, basically, you got to start with the graphics card. Well, I would assume that one, you got to check to make sure the graphics card you have has HDCP support for its digital output. I'm yes. assuming you're not using a VGA connection. If you're using a VGA, and you're probably doing 640 by 480 if you ever get this to run. It could be, <laughs> or it just might not play at all. Right. Uh, most monitors made in the last couple of years that feature a digital video input, be it HDMI or DVI, do support mm -hmm. uh, HDCP protected signals with those ports. Now, uh, again, check that graphics card first, because that might be the whole problem. You just might not yeah. have a graphics card that provides that output. If not, it's the monitor. So uh, is there a workaround for any of this? Yes. Slysoft.com, if you want to spend a little money on some software, although, do they have a Mac version of this? I want to say they do, actually. They do? Oh, maybe not. I could be wrong. <laughs> I know they have a PC version, so. Will I it work on I iTunes? It will work with anything. Really? On a PC, it will just make the whole issue vanish. Uh, so you could have, say, a graphics card that doesn't supply an HDCP protected signal out. You could have a monitor that has all analog inputs. Whatever, uh, that software will fix the problem, but that's spending some money to do it. So. Say, yeah, because there's basically there's, there's an annual fee now for any DVD. If you were using it perhaps to archive your content and make it displayable over your home network. <laughs> uh, the HD Fury might be another option for you. It does like HDMI or DVI inputs, a piece of hardware, about 100 150 bucks. It'll take care of the HDCP issues. Or moving to component, if you're lucky enough to have component inputs on the planar monitor. If you can get component out of your graphics card some way, Probably not. Probably won't work. Yeah. With Apple's content, I, I believe that's totally up to the, the owner of the content to decide if that protected path isn't there, what happens next? So yeah. they could just say, oh, if that protected digital pathway isn't there, it just isn't going to work. Yeah, look up your graphics, your GPU modules, you know, and if you can still return, the, if it turns out your GPU does do HDCP and your monitor doesn't, uh, the easiest thing to do is if you still can, return it and get a new one. As painful as that sounds. Yeah, it is. DJ writes in, what's the best audio output option for a PlayStation 3? I keep reading about HDMI versus digital optical. Can you please help me out? Thanks, DJ in Colorado. HDMI, all the way. <laughs> uh, optical and coaxial digital out audio outputs are unable to support uncompressed or lossless audio formats like uh, DTS HD Master Audio, Ooh. Dolby True HD, or high bitrate PCM audio. Which may not be a big deal to you if you don't have a receiver that does the decoding for the surround sound totally. for the latest high-end audio formats. Now, now, if you have the option to use either audio output, uh, stick with HDMI for the best quality yeah. and one less cable sticking out of the rear end of your console. But, you know, yeah. if you have to go optical, <laughs> one it's less there. cable out of your rear It's available DVD. to you as an option. <laughs> Maybe that might be the only thing you have on your input on your AVR if you have an older AVR too, but I'm, I'm going off topic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still stuck on <laughs> or tangent. HDMI cables and where they protrude. <laughs> we got another email. I plan on making my first upgrade to HD content in two months and I wanted to get you guys' opinion. I'm looking at the Sony 40 inch EX710 series for my first HD TV ever. Good thing you waited because you're getting much more television for your money and came across infinite contrast ratios. Is it true that a device can have infinite contrast ratio? Is the D-Link DIR655 still a good router to buy for a PS3, EX710, and a wireless G notebook? Also, is 20 megabits per second okay for streaming HD content and upgrading Cat6 cables? Thanks, Corey. Corey's got a massive there's a, shopping list. There's a lot going on there. Oh uh, let's start with the contrast ratio bit. Uh, basically, what you're, if you hear anything that's infinite or, or extremely high, like 
tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. 40,000 to one, 600,000 to one, 7 million to one. Exactly. These, that's essentially infinite to one or whatever. We An turned the monitor ratio. off and measured it. The, all contrast <laughs> ratio is really trying to tell you is how black is black. That's what it comes down to. And the way they measure these things, uh, one, you can do it what they call taking a dynamic contrast ratio measurement where you can make the TV as bright as possible regardless of image quality, make it as dark as possible regardless of image quality, and create the ratio that way. Or you can do something a little more realistic called a static contrast ratio where you'd actually put up, say, a checkerboard pattern on the screen, big black and white right. boxes, and then you take, you take the measurement simultaneously out of two of those boxes and then calculate it that way. That's a lot harder to do. And real world, you won't see most TVs go above, say, four or 5,000. And the ones that can get close to that, are those are some of the top, top tier TVs out there. Yeah. Uh, Short answer is infinite contrast ratios it's, it's marketing. are marketing fluff. Yeah. Ignore them. <laughs> it's real world's probably in the, in the range of, I'd say, one or two thousand, maybe two thousand to one. Which isn't bad. No, that's awesome, really. <laughs> uh, as far as your uh, router, the D DIR655, uh, I own it, I love it, I recommend it, and use it at home. It's 71 bucks online. Have no complaints there. It's a, it's a solid end yeah. router that will also work with your G and B gear as well. You like the Sony EX710 too, don't you? It, it's their edge. It's one of their newer edge lit uh, LCD monitors. Uh, extremely energy efficient. That's what's really nice about it. A couple of key things about it: it has 120 hertz refresh rate, which is nice because it also accepts 24p input. So if you really want to get a good theater experience while watching that TV, that'll do it. Also, it's internet ready with a nice selection of streaming services too. That's not the cheapest TV out there, so you're going to get some nice. Basically a nice assortment of different, ah, all, all the cool stuff you like, like your Netflix, Pandora, and a few other services out there as well. Yeah, so. and if you have a 20 megabit per second connection to the internet, you will be able to stream any known <laughs> streaming video format uh, now and well into the future, possibly it, be on multiple devices at the same time. That particular Sony does support mm -hmm. a wireless module. I've had mixed results with some of the wireless right. modules out there, though. So if you can, I'd say hardwire it. Nothing beats a piece of copper. <laughs> no. Truly. But yeah, 20 megabits per second is, is probably oh. for... Share that bandwidth. The insane <laughs> high end is like four or five times what you need for the most ridiculous rare surface out there. Hey, speaking of shopping, Powell writes in, after moving to Portland from New Orleans, I had to part with my LCD TV because it was too big to put on the plane. I suspect you probably departed with it in New Orleans before you left for Portland. In any case, he's ready to move on to a new TV. With Black Friday deals posted on our favorite sites, can you tell us what's good and what's junk? I'm looking for a 46 to 50 inch TV, 600 to $800 budget. Would not shy away from plasma. Powell in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. 600 to 800 seems a bit low for a 50 inch HDTV. If, if you run out and look in the stores, you'll find that there are some plasmas priced in that range. Mm. Uh, basically, everything's floating around 800 bucks if you're truly looking to go close to 50 inches. Uh, uh, it's going to be hard pressed to get under $800 for this. However, a uh, couple things to keep in mind. Uh, one, that plasma screens yeah. are, they are definitely more energy. They consume a lot more energy compared to, say, an LCD screen, especially if you run them in vivid mode. So for the big screen flat panel TVs that do feature 1080p resolution, I'm not looking at anything a dozen anymore, and cost about $800, you'll have to go with uh, a smaller LCD, basically, if you want to get that price closer to your $600 point. But two plasmas that jumped out at me, uh, Panasonic has their TC P50, it's a 50-inch screen, their S2 series. About $800 even on Amazon right now or online. And LG, they have their PK550 series, 50-inch screen again. That's about $900 online. Now, for a little bit less, you can shrink the screen size down to 46 and 47 inches. And I had a, a, a Toshiba 46 G300, awesome TV, $730 roughly online price. And LG has a 47-inch LD520, which is about $830. So that gives you a 47-inch screen for about that price. But That's awfully close to 15. I don't think you're going to notice the difference between close. 47 and 50 inches. Probably not, no. Yeah. But bigger is always better. That's <laughs> what I'll say. And 1080p is a must. I wouldn't go with anything less than that. And it'd be nice to have internet features, but at the price point and the screen size you're going at, that would be tough to do. You know that Optoma HD180 is available from Costco. If you have a Costco membership, you can pick that up. For oh, you like can get that online for the 65 online or something. 919 for the HD20. You could go for projection. And then you could have, if you have a white wall or a sheet, you could tack out. You could have like the 80, <laughs> 90 inch screen. True home theater. <laughs> Hey, it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of November 23rd, 2010. First up, the Criterion Collection's America Lost and Found, the BBS story. This is a collection of seven movies made between 1968 and 1972 by the production company that brought you Easy Rider. Along with Easy Rider, the collection includes Head, Five Easy Pieces, Drive, he said, The Last Picture Show, and The King of Marvin Gardens. 
Filmmakers Bob Rafelson and Bert Schneider, who created The Monkees, joined with Steve Blauner to create BBS Productions, and as a team went on to produce a slew of films which gave Hollywood a much needed jump start. All seven films in the collection get a 1080p transfer, and Head and Easy Rider get a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 surround track, while the other five include an uncompressed monaural soundtrack. And they all get the usual criterion treatment with extras included. So if you've held off on buying Easy Rider on Blu-ray, or are just a fan of that late 60s era in film history, this is the collection for you. Next up, The Complete Metropolis. This 1927 German film is one of the first sci-fi movies ever made, and it's been through quite an ordeal. The original film that premiered in Berlin ran 153 minutes, but when it was released overseas, it was edited and cut down. Theaters also screened the film at 24 frames per second instead of the 16 frames per second at which it was filmed, resulting in a 90-minute version, which completely mangled the pacing and the plot. In 2001, a new restoration was released, this time with a running time of 124 minutes, but still missing an additional 20 minutes of film. Two years ago, a copy of the original film was discovered in the Museum of Cinema in Argentina. Finally, the entire film, as it was originally intended, was intact. And the Blu-ray release this week is the first time it's been available for purchase. Blu-ray.com has a detailed review available, giving it high marks despite the tricky nature of the release. So own a copy of Cinema History today and check out The Complete Metropolis on Blu-ray. Also released this week, Deadwood, The Complete Series. It's one of Patrick's favorite TV shows, and for good reason. This HBO series only lasted three seasons, but what an awesome three seasons it was. It follows the development of Deadwood in South Dakota from a settlement to a town, complete with historical figures like Al Swearingen, Calamity Jane, Wild Bill Hickok, Wyatt Earp, and many more. This release includes 13 discs with all 36 episodes and includes a ton of extras. You'll get all the special features that are available on the individual season DVD releases, plus four additional hours of never before seen content, totaling an incredible six hours of bonus features, not including the 17 full length commentary tracks on selected episodes. There's an hour long Q&A with the cast and crew, a 20 minute conversation with the creator about his intention and vision, an hour long making of season two finale, and much more. So if you're wondering what the big deal is about this eight-time Emmy award-winning show, now's the perfect time to find out. Other releases include Countdown to Zero, Crank with Crank 2, Diary of a Mad Black Woman, The Disappearance of Alice Creed, Eat, Pray, Love, The Expendables, The Family That Prays, Flipped, The History Channel's Human Weapon, The Complete Season 1, 2007's The Hunting Party, I'm Still Here, Medea Goes to Jail, Medea's Big Happy Family, The Play, Medea's Family Reunion, The Pillars of the Earth, Salon Kitty, The Search for Santa Paws, Why Did I Get Married? And released yesterday, November 22nd, 2010, Regina Spector, Live in London. 